We're taking a look at Dance Dollars today with Lisa Eintema. She is the founder of Dance Data Project. Great to have you here today. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. You've done a number of studies taking a look at women and the economics of dance, especially with ballet. So what are you finding? That's correct. What I'm finding is that uh, even though women are the economic drivers in the dance industry, and by the way, it is a global industry. It's not just an art. While women are 20 to 1, uh, the students in ballet schools, they're also the major donors. They're 75% of the audience. The more you look, the less women you see in terms of leadership roles at big companies. And of course, big companies are where, where the big dollars are. Do women make a difference when they are in leadership roles in dance? Absolutely. Just like in corporate America, if you have a woman artistic director or executive director, if you have a number of women in strong positions on the board, you're going to see better, more innovative, more interesting programming. And as a matter of fact, the programs with women choreographers actually are the most popular. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. That's great to I know. I think so too. So there's a real fear that if we don't tell the story the way it's always been told, nobody's going to come. Actually, the reverse is true. The more innovative your lens, the more you kind of change things up, the more modern it is, the more the audiences are going to see themselves and the more willing they are to spend the money to go to the ballet. Now, how do big cities compare to smaller towns? Well, this is what's really interesting. It's actually the reverse of what you think. So the big, big companies, generally run by men, all kind of follow the same pattern. And they're, they have a set schedule. And maybe you'll find one minority, one woman in a small piece. In the smaller cities, Charlotte, Sacramento, Dayton, Ohio, or the second companies in big cities, like Chicago, San Francisco, or Philadelphia, you actually see more new work, more commissioned pieces, much more innovative. And because they're working with smaller budgets, usually these women directors, who can both be a CEO and the artistic director, put more on the stage for less money. They're multitasking. They're Why multitasking. does that not surprise me? You've never seen anybody work so hard <laughs> as a woman artist running her own company. I can believe that. Nobody yeah. wants to fail. Now let's take a look at what can be done to improve the picture for women and dance and running more more companies. So I think that's a great question and here's why. Because the assumption is it's always been this way, it's always going to be this way, and there's nothing we can do about it. And that's actually not true. So there's three great initiatives that I can speak to. Um, I'm lead sponsor on two of them. One is American Ballet Theater, the other is Pacific Northwest Ballet, and the third one is Boston Ballet. They are multi-year, multi-level commitments to pushing women's careers forward. Because what's happened in the past is one and done. Somebody throws millions of dollars, and then you don't see any follow through. Good to know. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been really fun. And keeping us on our toes. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Check out businessfirstam.com to find out where to see our entire show. And don't forget to like, follow, and share Business First AM.